Deep in the Lake District, these fells beloved by poets and pioneers, lies a wound in the earth, a place where men once clawed at rock for a metal more precious than gold to forge instruments of war. This is Carrack Mine, where German industrialists paid fortunes for British tungsten, where an ancient geological collision, granite's Grecian clawing against Gabbro, cooked a cocktail of metals into being. Tungsten, arsenic, lead, and perhaps uranium. For over a century, this mine pulsed like a fevered heart, thriving when the world was at war, falling silent when peace returned. Today, only fossils remain. Crumbling engine houses, slag heaps bleeding minerals into the soil, the whispers of pickaxes replaced by wind over crags. But some secrets outlive their keepers. Beneath these fells where Dickens wandered, radioactive traces linger. Did miners unknowingly toss aside hot rocks? Do veins still surface their ancient energy? And if they lead where I think they do, we may have to follow them deep into Carrick's black heart. I'm the uranium hunter and today we exhume Carrick's radioactive truth. The Lake District Wordsworth's inspiration. Postcard perfect valleys drawing millions. But beyond those picture book lakes lies a land forged in violence. This is where continents collided, where volcanoes roared and glaciers carved, where the Skiddaw granite meets the Carrickfell complex, a geological battleground just miles from the Scottish border. And it left something far more valuable than scenery, a geological lottery ticket. Beneath these hills, a spider web of faults and veins hides rare metals. A dozen mines once bled them dry, but Carrick? Carrick was king. It's tungsten veins slash north to south, Harding Smith, Emerson, while lead veins cross east to west like stubborn scars. Today we hunt what the earth left behind for the telltale tick of radioactivity. <laughs> Here's today's radioactive treasure hunt. From the car park, we'll track Grains Gold Beck, scanning the North Bank for any mineral clues hiding in the face of the bank. Then we're climbing to the three exposed veins, Harding, Emerson and Smith, hunting for hot spots where radioactive minerals might surface. Finally, we'll examine the mine entrance, the crumbling old mine buildings and spoil heaps, which could hide the most concentrated evidence of Carrick's radioactive past. If this mine's hiding uranium, we'll find where it surfaces. We part just next to the river Coldu. The views were stunning, but we weren't to be distracted. Hello and welcome to another episode and here we are at the top of the Lake District in Carrick Fell and it's beautiful here, I've never been around here before so just behind me you've got some wonderful mountains and then you've got the valley on the other side looking gorgeous there so where we're going, i will just walk across is that we're going to be looking down here so this is Carrick Mine, and the sort of river follows the, leads up to the mine, and there's a path right next to it, so that'll be cool. Um, why are we here? Well, the reasons are twofold. First of all, this is a very well-studied area, and we've got lots of heavy metals. Um, this is a former lead mine, a former tungsten mine, which is good stuff. Um, the second reason is that there's actually been studies done here and they found uranium. And that's what we're here for, to find uranium. So uh, there are three veins of heavy metals which are apparently easy to spot from the surface. And there's also the possibility of finding something interesting on the, the bank of the stream. So there's lots to go at here and uh, we'll see how we do. Weather set fair, looks like it's gonna be a, a pretty decent day. Let's see how we go.
So this is all very promising. This quartzy stuff, it's a good start. Things are on the right tracks. There are certainly some interesting looking rock formations here. Colourful light gym populated rocks, sadly not radioactive, and quartzy veins were our first clue. But it was Grainsgill Beck and its northern bank which attracted us first. So up in this area, we've elevated it levels at about 0.2. Sadly, it's just too unstable for me to get a proper reading. We combed every metre of this bank. Our detector whispered promises. 0 0.20 microsieverts. Just enough radiation to know something's here but never the spike we wanted. Stunning quartz veins and mysterious Grecian boulders, all the right ingredients, but no payoff. This Beck was teasing us. The mine isn't ready to give up its secrets yet. So unfortunately, the north bank behind me didn't come up with anything concrete. Uh, there were elevated levels up to 0.2, uh, but unfortunately, there didn't seem to be any actual minerals or veins that were producing the radioactivity. So whilst there is something there, uh, unfortunately, it seems to be beyond the level of my equipment. So let's go forward and explore more. A short walk brought us to the hilltop this windswept balcony overlooking history. Standing here now, it's hard not to hear the ghosts of Carrick Mine, the metallic tang of crushed tungsten ore still clinging to the rocks, the shouts of miners echoing off valley walls that now answer only with silence, the rhythmic groan of steam engines replaced by the lonely cry of a circling buzzard. Yet for all that's faded, something remains. Not in the crumbling buildings or rusted rails, but in the very stones beneath our boots. The same veins that fed empires still lie here, waiting to share their secrets. So here I am at the mine itself, and as you can see, it's got a bit windy and a bit murky. But what a fantastic place. And behind me is one of the old slag heaps. And then if I go this way... That's, um, that's Brandigo over there, and there's more stuff up there, which might be a future video. And then either side of that, there are two more veins, the Emerson and the Harding. And over there, I don't know if you can quite see it, is the remains of the old mine. So we're going to have, have a little look at that, but I'm more interested in the waste and the Smith vein, which is even further over there to see what there is, but well, what a fantastic place this is. The black mouth of the mine yawned before me, the Canadian level left open like an invitation. Cold damp air rushed out to greet me, carrying the metallic whisper of ancient workings and the roar of unseen water below. This was no forgotten hole in the hill. This tunnel bore history in its bones. In 1942, Canadian servicemen attacked this hillside with pick and powder, driving this very level in their desperate hunt for tungsten, the war metal that could pierce Nazi armour. Their sweat still lingers in these rocks. Their ghosts might too. 
my Geiger counter twitched to life. 0.4 microsieverts. Not dangerous, but undeniable. Something down there was singing the old song of unstable atoms. The water's roar warned me back today, but the stones told their truth. This mine isn't done with me yet. So, apart from taking a few readings right on the inside, right on the entrance, I ain't going any further than this. This is a spooky mine. Next time, I'll return with helmet, lamp and the courage to walk where those Canadians once toiled. Because if Carrick Mine wants to share its radioactive secrets, well, I know how to listen. If that mine entrance was haunted, at least it was politely radioactive. 0.4 microsieverts worth of spectral hospitality. Spirits lifted, pun intended, we turned our attention to exploring the valley's surface secrets. The ruins stood like crumbling sentinels, their iron bones rusting back into the earth, while the beck laughed its way downhill, oblivious. Time always wins in these hills, but it leaves fascinating scars. But our real hope lay higher up, the mighty smith vein, its quartz bones jutting from the hillside. Turns out promising rocks can be pathological liars. 0.03 microsieverts. Our lunchtime banana was packing a higher dose. Some days you're the uranium hunter. Others, you're just a guy eating a radioactive fruit in a beautiful graveyard of industry. But Brandy Gill was winking at us from the north, where waterfalls dress up the scars of old lead mines. Maybe there the rocks won't insult us with banana-grade readings. Until then, Smith Vane, you're appealing, but not hot enough. Defeated, we picked our way across the stream to the old spoil heap, picked cleaner than a museum display. Generations of collectors had left only broken rock and stories behind. So we claimed our consolation prize, the throne of a pretend uranium king, surveying our domain from atop the rubble. The mine entrance yawning below us, the viewpoint stretching to the hills, the beck singing its endless song. A perfect ending to a quiet hunt. Until that glint on the far bank. That familiar jagged dance of court and Grecian. The geometry of something meant to be there. Our boots hit the water before the thought finished forming. Because rocks might lie, but Geiger counters don't. The clues were all there, sheared rock, fault lights, quartz veins bleeding through granite like cracked lightning. Our adventures had taught us this was where the glow should hide. Turns out Karak Mine saves its best tricks for those who look twice.
frantic chirping in our hands wasn't just static anymore, it was a siren song. The numbers didn't lie, 0.39 microsieverts and climbing. Was this the vein's hidden tail slithering underground from the mine entrance? The North Bank's radioactive revenge for our earlier scepticism? Or some geological pranks that tossing hot rocks into the bed like cosmic breadcrumbs? Our Geiger counter didn't care about theories, only facts, and the fact was we were drunk on decay, giggling like prospectors who just found a chest of gamma ray gold. And look, our first volunteer, this intrepid earthworm, bravely slithering through the rocks like a tiny wriggling lab assistant. While he aerates the soil, we'll take readings from his office. Professor Wigglesworth, PhD in subsurface radiobiology. So if you see there, there you go, that's a slightly better view of it. So that's where I found the stuff. So what have we learned? That radiation hides in plain sight, lurking in jagged stream rocks as boldly as it whispers from mine entrances. That nature always wins, dressing industry's ruins in moss and worm-cast finery. And that radioactive hills are exhausting. Non-radioactive hills are just cruel punishment for a uranium hunter's legs. Post-trip research confirmed it. We'd stumbled over a crisscross of metallic veins exactly where our Geiger counter sang. Proof that rocks do speak if you learn their language. But one thought haunted us louder than any Geiger's chirp. That mine isn't done with us yet. Special thanks to Professor Wigglesworth, our wormy field assistant. <laughs> Nobel Prize pending. In part two of the Carrick Mine Adventure, we venture into the mine itself. What spooky things and clicky sounds will we discover? 